Welcome back to the Ing Lit Hit. In 2004, when Jose Mourinho arrived at Chelsea to take up a new managerial role at the football club, he said these words, Please do not call me arrogant, because what I'm saying is true. I'm European champion, so I'm not one out of the bottle. I think I'm a special one. You might be forgiven for thinking Mourinho channelled the spirit of Ozymandias in this infamous declaration of self-confidence. In the same way as Ozymandias, Mourinho's career, full of successes with Porto and Chelsea and Real Madrid, has been marred by recent failures with other clubs. Like all extensive empires, Mourinho's too is beginning to diminish. Shelley's Ozymandias is a poem for modern times as well as old. His message that human power is transient and fleeting is one that transcends the subject of the poem and is immediately applicable to any arrogant autocrat. Think Saddam Hussein, the vicious Iraqi dictator. He was convicted of crimes against humanity in 2006. In 2003, a statue that was erected in his honour was destroyed by furious citizens who subsequently decapitated it. In the 21st century AD, in the 13th century BCE, absolutist power corrupts the individual and as Shelley has depicted in his poem, time will have its way with us. And before that, the satirist, the protester, the mocker, well, they'll give it a bloody good go too. We see Mourinho's self-assurance in Ozymandias' own declaration. Both use a first-person pronoun, I'm European champion, and my name. To make it absolutely clear that this is a statement about them and nobody else. Both command their listeners, do not call me arrogant, and look on my works. Both award themselves titles, I'm a special one and King of Kings. While Mourinho's pride was certainly startling, Ozymandias' haughtiness in attributing to himself the godly title that is so prevalent in the Bible is incomparably staggering, particularly when the reader benefits from knowing that this tyrant is in fact a shattered visage. Shelley does not want us to despair, he wants us to laugh. However, Is there a case for arguing that the poem is meant to scare us in its astonishing irony? This antique traveller feels the need to recount his experiences in the desert. Why? Not to make us laugh at a dictator we never knew, but because this colossal wreck is a striking image of human mortality. Time gives way to an emptiness, not just for dictators and tyrants, but for ordinary people too. If Ozymandias' fate is one of eternal humiliation, a tarnished and fragmented legacy, then what hope does this traveller have, or indeed the eye at the beginning? Shelley's poem is a cutting rebuke of the overconfident. In the final lines, we will see how humanity and its man-made empires are nothing on the power of nature. Perhaps this is Shelley's own call to look on my work, see mighty, and despair. If you like this video, please subscribe below.